to the Dark Side of Soul podcast. This is Joe. This is Sean. And we are, you might notice if you're not watching the video as a patron, uh, <laughs> the sound is a little different. It's because Sean and I are actually in the same room, like the same car together. Mm-hmm. We're driving. A moving room. Yes, we're driving around. Uh, Korea, specifically, we're now in Paju. We're really close to the DMZ line. Not far from where I live. Not far from where Sean lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we thought we'd do a, a driving version of the show. We've been wanting to do that mm-hmm. and uh, talk a little bit about. Road stuff, transportation. Road safety. The dark side of transportation. The dark side of roads. Which, that does not sound sexy at all. No, no. Dark this, side. Even if you say the dark side, the dark side of transportation. Right. The dark side of... It sounds like an Epcot Center. Car pavilion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So follow the, the lane here to, to go that way. So, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. And Sean's going to give me directions because I don't know where I'm going. Mm. Um, We're not really going anywhere. We're just driving. Yes. So, an introduction. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we run the Dark Side of Soul Ghost Walk. Uh, you can book all that at darksideofsoul.com. We run that five days a week. Uh, I just ran a tour last night. And uh, we also have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash darksideofsoul, where you can join in the conversation. Lots of fun. Sean regularly does uh, live-streamed horror movies. You sit in the chat room and get some popcorn, pizza, and watch watch classic horror. We also, uh, Sean's coming out with a, uh, working on a new book. Mm. Yeah, so the book uh, talks about modern modern ghost experiences in Korea. So if anyone listening has had one, contact us through Facebook. Just send us a message, and uh, we'll we'll get the message. And then uh, just say that I have a story, uh, a ghost experience that I'd like to share, and then I'll get back to you, and uh, we'll connect through email. That's the easiest way to actually share the story. Don't don't. Uh, there's no need to type the whole story out. Oh my! Messenger, because uh, a couple of people have done that. I was like, let's just move this to email. It's just easier to, easier to do that. Um, but thank good effort. Oh yeah, no, uh, yeah, and I've, I've collected quite a few stories so far. We got lots of stuff <clears throat> recorded from the tour. That's all going into the book, and um, yeah. So if we like what you have to say, what your experience was, then we'll put it in the book. So, yeah, get in touch. Also, very soon, the Dark Side of Soul comic. Yes, on the way. Um, yeah, I wrote a comic book, The Dark Side of Soul, Weird Tales from Korean Lore. And uh, uh, my, my partner, uh, Tim Bauer, has illustrated it. It's just about ready to come out. We're doing some final proofreading, and we'll pass it on to the printer, so it should be out soon. Um, maybe by the time this video comes out, hopefully. Possibly by around the time the video yep. comes out. So, so go to uh, our Facebook page or go to Gar- Dark Side of Soul. Gar- Dark Side of Soul. <laughs> Dark Side of Soul. Dark Side of Soul. Dark Side of Soul. Dark of Soul. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Yes. This is what four and a half months of not drinking will do to you. That's right. You need a drink, Joe. <laughs> Let's do that now. <laughs> 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 Oh man! So yeah, that's uh, what else are we doing right now? We also have an Instagram. If you want to do our Instagram, Instagram dot yep. com slash dark side of soul. Yep, it's fairly yeah. It's I, I I update it now and again. I should be a little bit more active on there because uh, every time I post something, we get one or two follows. So I should mm. be posting regularly on there. A lot of uh, people are see- seemingly are migrating from Facebook to Instagram these days. Well, but we were far more active on Facebook. Yeah, I can see why people are moving more to Instagram. It's just for peace. It's just a nicer conversation on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and um, thank you to our patrons. We're on Patreon as well. Did we say that? No, patreon.com slash Dark Side of Soul, where you can watch the videos of our show. Mm-hmm. 
just contributed uh, maybe, maybe five dollars a month and uh, uh, yeah uh, you, can, you get all this extra stuff yeah exclusive content yeah early access to our early access to our podcast and the video versions of the podcasts the unedited versions of the podcast as well um and uh, what else? Oh, the exclusive content. I do weird tales from the, from Korean lore, and I, which that audio series I get the name for that from. Oh, that I uh, from the comic book. Came ah, up, yeah, came, yeah. Came up with the name uh, for the comic, and then um, when I was thinking what to do with that audio series, turn right. Um, Where the, at the at the intersection. Oh. Um, and I uh, was thinking what to call the audio series. I was like, I'll just call it Weird Tales from Korean War. Keep uh, keep things within the same lane. But I also do... <laughs> same lane. In the same lane. <laughs> Transportation reference right there. I'm going to do a lot of trans- a lot of car puns. Um, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but uh, uh, <laughs> I'm good with puns. <laughs> um, actually, I'm not. Um, but... Uh, yeah, and then the other series I do, audio series, is Letters from the Dead. And that's really new. I've only done two of those so far. Can I turn right here? With yeah, well, you have to. I think you can go, I, I guess. Like uh, They just did. They just did. Maybe, but you'd have to stop here. You can't. I don't think you can go through there. Um, I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> There's no cars coming. <laughs> So, yeah, we're doing this episode. Oh, and then thank you to our patrons. Joe's driving, so I'll do a lot of this introduction. So thanks to Angel Earl, Joel Bonamini, Jamie Staley, and Sharon Cullen. And if you become uh, a top-tier patron, those are our top-tier. That's, that's not all of our patrons. We have more than that. But we have more. Yeah, we have more than that. But, uh, yeah, keep going straight. Um, and I just follow this road, and we'll be heading up towards... Uh, 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 not big man eagle towards uh, towards the book village actually. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to be where you keep all the bodies. That's behind the book village. Ah, um, so not far. Yeah. Also in Provence, I have a few. Provence. <laughs> um. So yes, but those those are top tier patrons. Thank you to all of our patrons. Those are top tier patrons. If you become a top tier patron, you get a lot of other goodies too. You get way more stuff. Uh, you get to chat with uh, with uh, Joe and myself once a month. We do a Zoom video chat, which is always good fun. And everyone, it's a fun group. And yeah. Last last the last one, Sean oh, and everyone gosh. was was up until the wee hours of the morning, getting drunk. Five thirty in the morning, we we stopped. <sighs> yeah, I, I think I, I finished almost a whole bottle of whiskey that night. It was great. We were just chatting about so many different things, and a lot of it's a blur, to be honest. I don't remember a whole lot of it. nerds. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, we chat about a lot of stuff. Everyone's really intelligent and passionate about, about their views and and um, and their ideas and their their loves of things, and so yeah, it's great. It's a great group. It's a lot of fun. It's fun. Yeah. So, that, that's our patron. So become a patron. Become a patron today. There we go. Yeah. So, Joe, mm-hmm. roads. Yeah, um, they take you. Well, they take you places. Yeah, they take you. all roads lead to Paju. Paju. <laughs> all ghost tales lead to Paju. It seems like all road based. Yeah, a lot tales. of them. Do. Yeah, there's a whole ton. So there's a strip. We might drive it. We could get on it. Yeah. It's easy to, to get get on it. Uh, really? Near the, near the book village. It's up to you, though. We can just explore Paju a bit more. Yeah, we can do that, too. Yeah. We're, we're near it. There's a, there's a strip, uh, Jai Road, Freedom Road, and it kind of goes to North Korea, if it could. In fact, I'm... It goes to the border. It goes to the border when... When, uh... Uh, the first summit with Kim Jong Un happened a couple of years ago, or was it last year? Oh my gosh, when was it? Uh, it was a year. Oh, was that two years ago? Might no, no, last no. year. It was, I think it was last year. A year, a year. April passed. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, yeah. South Korean President Moon Jae In drove Jairo up to North Korea. Mm-hmm. Uh, ironically, that was the very same road North Korea used to invade Seoul. <laughs> But there's this little strip between Paju and Seoul. 
Goyang, around Goyang. And, they, they, and there's lots of talks of ghost stories around that way. Yeah. Um, okay, watch out, Cart. Yeah. You're, you're going to... Okay. We, we're telling ghost in. stories. We don't want to become a ghost story. Yeah. Yeah, so lots of people have seen this. Um, there was one strip... There's this one strip where they see the shape of a woman in the middle of the road uh, wearing those really large sunglasses. And uh, as they get closer, they, they realize they're not sunglasses. They're, they're eye sockets. Uh, a couple of celebrities, uh, Tak Jae Hoon and Park Hee Jin, have also claimed to have seen it. Um, but it's this one strip. Now, if you ever driven Jairo, I, I drove Jairo last night. And um, that in itself is a little dangerous because that ah oh, the drunks yeah. Yeah. on that road at night. It's easy to get to that that highway from Hongdae, and that's where people are are out partying. It's a lot of drunk drivers do pass through there. Yeah, and um, uh, there's this one strip that is not as well lit, and it, and it's. Um, it has like occasional street lights and there's a lot of fog in this area. And so that's that's been attributed to the ghosts. Um, and also, hold on. Watch the turn here. I know, I'm watching the turn. I'm checking my notes. Yeah. I just want to make sure I don't leave anything out. Right, right. Um, but there's, there's speculation that this could be what where people are seeing the ghosts or sometimes they see a gray alien. Yeah, that's interesting. I haven't heard a lot about that, but yeah, it's, it's gray. A, a gray? They call them the grays. That's yeah. yeah. All in this section. Uh, there, lots of urban legends come from this area. Uh, uh, like, who is it? Uh, one speculation: it's a it's a woman who got in a fight with her boyfriend or her husband and got out of the car. And after she was walking, she got hit in a uh, killed in a hit and run. And her, eye, her eyes popped out. So maybe so. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of... Uh, and the, that that within itself is an urban legend. Um, a lot of urban legends have, have uh, um, kind of grown off of that. Kind of branches, smaller branches of that urban legend tree. And I'm sure, I'm sure other places around the world have similar, lots of on the road stories are kind of similar. Yeah. Well, what, yeah. So like one of the versions of the, or one, one, alleged, one urban, one part of that urban legend, a story that, that, you know, that people say happened, there was a taxi driver mm -hmm. and he was driving along the highway and he, he, he saw a woman and uh, he picked her up. She got in the back seat. And she gave the directions to the driver and he, he punched it into his GPS. So this wasn't that long ago. This allegedly, when it happened, he punched it into the GPS, and the, the coordinates came up. And it was pretty remote. And so he went there because those are the coordinates that she gave him. And he he drove to that area, and uh, he looked back and he said, "You know, we're here," and there was no one in the car. Yeah. And then when he looked up, they were in front of a cemetery. Ooh. And there are a lot of stories like that from around the world. The, the, the disappearing ghost that gets dropped off in front of the cemetery. That's very common. So I think it's just migrated, migrated over. It's been disseminated into Korean urban legend as well. But the, the sunglasses lady is also blamed for, if you see congestion on Jairo, right. accidents. Right, yeah, she's more, she could be like a sagui, the vicious ghosts of Korean lore. Uh, they, <laughs> they, they, they cause trouble and, um, uh, you know, calamities and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but I know someone who who claims they saw the ghost, the Jayado ghost. Oh, tell me. Um, and she, I, I, I've met her personally, so she told the story directly to me. Um, and we were just chatting about different things. I was with her, my wife, and then like their their uh, their friend, their circle, their mutual friend. Yeah, and um, I don't remember. I don't remember how we got onto the. The topic of, of this is prob probably me because I'm always fishing to find stories and folk beliefs from from uh, Koreans. That's what I do. So I, I probably brought it up. Kind of like urban legends too. They're kind of like modern folk beliefs, you could think. 
legends. Oh, they are, yeah, contemporary legend, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. So, um, now she said she was driving one night, and uh, she was cross. She was driving, and she was coming to, to one of the bridges. You know, along the Jayudo, mm-hmm. there are a few bridges that cross the the highway. Yeah, I know. Yes, yeah, sir. yeah, and then some of them go directly across to the to the Han River, and. Um, when she was driving, she was, she came to a bridge, and when she looked up, she still, it was still in the distance. When she looked up, there was someone on the railing, kind of looking down at the traffic, mm-hmm. and it was a woman. She had long hair, and the wind was kind of blowing her hair a little bit. And uh, when she when the woman that I know got closer, she kept looking up because she was like, "Is she, she going to jump into the traffic?" That's what she was thinking. She's like, this, is this person going to try to commit suicide here? And she kept kind of looking up and looking at the road. And then when she looked up and she got closer, she got a good look at the face, and there were no eyes. Whoa. Yeah. And she said when that happened, she kind of screamed in the car, and she almost crashed. Oh, my. So she got she got a hand, uh, handle on the, on the car, on the, on the, the wheel. So... A lot of people could say that's another thing that, that ghosts do. Certain ghosts, like the Sagui, they, uh, they cause people to have accidents and hmm. even cause them to kill themselves. So, yeah, she's, she's adamant. She's like, I saw someone there with no eyes. And it was, an old, it was a woman, and she said she was terrified and frightened the hell out of her. And, of course, she was past the bridge, or she was on the highway, so she couldn't stop. I don't think she wanted to stop and go back and have a look, but she, she had to keep going. But she was terrified. She was in the car by herself, and she was on her way home. So, yeah. So I met someone who allegedly saw a ghost on the Freedom Highway. Mm. There's a, a chain of other ones, I think. They're more of a truck driver lore. Okay. Uh, these are fun. I came across these. This is on the... I came across these in a uh, Korean language... Um, Actually, part of it was from Wikipedia, Korean Wikipedia, Korean oh, really? Wikia, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and there are videos of these too. Mm-hmm. Um, one is a courier uh, driving on that same strip, and uh, uh, at night, all these all happen at night. And they all have very similar stories. Mm-hmm. Just, they're just like variations on a thing. And uh, he heard in the in the back something banging up against the wall. So he, he stopped and checked, and he opened it up, opened it up, and uh, he checked all the boxes, and he found one box with this red ooze seeping out the bottom. And he went and checked his manifest. There was no there was no uh, label on it, so he went to check his manifest to say uh, what was going on, and then he really he saw that uh, manifest said uh, forty. He had forty three packages, and he counted forty four. And he, he freaked out. He said, okay, this is not right. And this, this red ooze coming out the bottom. So he tossed the package in the middle of the road and left. And that's, wow. And that's it. <laughs> wow. It's, yeah, so it leaves your imagination to try to uh, decipher what the package If you see these packages in the middle of the road. But the other one is a similar one. is a guy, uh, a meat uh, delivery in a freezer truck. Mm. And he's... Uh, Sam, same thing. He's driving down that road, and if he hears the banging on the wall of the truck, he stops to check, and uh, it's, it's all these sides of meat frozen, hanging, yep. hanging there. Mm. And um, uh, he, he hears the bumping still, and um, he, he goes in and he, he touches this piece of meat that is not frozen; it is still warm. And he looks at his hand, and it's all bloody. And um, so yeah, it's not frozen. It's the fresh meat that wasn't there when when they loaded up the truck. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, same thing. He threw it out in the middle of the road. Right, right, right. <laughs> Get the hell out of here! Get out of here! Oh my goodness, this is the same. Oh, okay. So we're coming up, yeah, on on uh, the um, the Provence, and uh, it's right near here. We came across a big dead snake in the middle of the road. Oh, nice. You rarely see snakes in Korea. Dark side of so roadkill. And well, we, we, we turned around because my, my, my wife and child had never seen a snake out in the wild before. So I was like, look, look, it's a snake. Got lots of snakes up where I am. Uh, yeah, the only, I'm one sorry. reason I thought I was staying in Korea is I didn't think we had snakes. 
there are there are venomous snakes in Korea. They're no, no, tell me this. There are pit vipers. Well, I, I you know because I go hiking all the time, so got to be aware of uh, wild animals and stuff. Yeah, there were tigers here at one point. Anyway, and that one time I saw a red panda on the tour. A red panda? Did I tell you that? There's no red pandas in Korea. You see it in the zoo? N yeah, I saw it right behind Doksugung. You I mean swear, raccoon dogs? It might have been. It looked. We looked at each other right in the eye, and it ducked in the bushes. It looked just like a red panda. Really? I'm sure it wasn't a big ferret or something. I just like to try because at first I thought it was a cat. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Because right, yeah, I, I don't think there are red pandas in Korea. Well, yeah, I don't think there are either. But yeah, it was no. there was something there. It looked just like a red panda. I went looking for red pandas once in the Himalaya. The last time was it maybe my last big trip there. Going through the there might be a similar animal that I saw, but I like the idea that it was a red panda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I got another trucker story. Okay. Uh, again, that strip of road, but this is more a long haul trip. So there were, well, there was a car. It was a big cargo truck, and so there were there were two guys, and it was a, it was. A, am I turning right here? Yeah, turn right here. Yeah. Okay. There, were, there, there were two guys, and uh, one wanted to go take a nap in the back with where the cargo was and um, he went in the back and uh, they, they, a lot of these stories I didn't mention on the other ones before they, they also tend to stop and check the cargo anyway just randomly just checking everything so this yes, one time the motif. Uh, stopped and checked the cargo and the guy was still there and sleeping and he's like don't worry I got it covered and so they go, they go all the way to their destination, and they they unload all the cargo, and they're getting ready to come back. And uh, the guys, I think the guy was going to go take a nap again, but before they went back, he said he had to go use the bathroom, and uh, it, it was really short when he was in the bathroom. He comes back, and the guy said that was that was really short, and he nods and goes back in the back and covers himself under the blankets, goes back to sleep. Guy starts driving again, and uh, while he was driving, he gets a, t a text message, and it's from the guy, and he says, "Why did you leave me behind?" <laughs> Jeez. He stops and he stops the truck, and he shakily looks back, and he goes to grab the blanket, and there's no one under the blanket. Oh my god! Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, those are the, those are my new stories I have. Right, right. Um, yeah, those are those are interesting. Yeah, I've never heard of any of those. Uh, Me neither. So that's why. I was really yeah. One thing I find interesting about the way cars are looked at through a folklore lens, um, they've connected cars. Some Koreans have connected cars to their ancient folklore. So there's the gosa. Gosa are the rituals. Uh, that Koreans have been performing, holding for a very, very long time. There's a cemetery, by the way. Um, for a very, very long... This is why I wanted to drive this way. <laughs> so, uh, There's a cemetery, guys! Yeah, Look in the back! Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, the gosa, or the rituals, the rituals for appeasing and worshipping the spirits of the home. So, uh, like some of the major spirits are like the Jo Wong. The Jo Wong is the is the, um, the the kitchen god. Uh, then there's also the Chukshin, which is the bathroom, the bathroom of the god, the, the malevolent spirit. Knowing my luck, that's what I'll end up being. Right. <laughs> so, um, uh, you can go straight here. I'm not just speed bump. Yeah. So this is Haiti, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember passing through here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I tend to get... Man, whenever I'm recording, I get the bumpiest roads. <laughs> so you can choose... This goes to Moonsun. Yeah, I don't um, know where I am. Or, yeah, you get back. So. Let's go to Moonsun. Sure. So, There's a good restaurant out here. Okay. We're going way up north now. Yeah, we're going up to the DMZ now. Yeah. So these gosa were, were rituals that Koreans performed at home to appease the spirits that they believed lived in their home. And... Um, they, in modern times, with the advent of automobiles, but especially with the advent of more and more Koreans being able to afford automobiles, um, they they shifted this gosa into modern times, into the charong 
scopes out. <laughs> so Chinese shop means car. Automobile. Yeah, literally. So it's, it's the same thing where car meant like a sedan car, but then now we call them automobiles, auto cars. Mm-hmm. Koreans said the same thing. Cha dong, I'm just saying this for listeners. Cha dong means automatic, and cha is car, so it literally means automatic car, auto, ah. automobile. So uh, the cha dong cha gosa, the ritual. And uh, yeah, some people still perform these when they buy a new car uh, or after they have an accident. If there is an accident, a minor one, they'll have the charung cha gosa to uh, kind of appease the, the spirits. And so they don't have another one, so they don't, they don't have another accident. Do you know how this ritual is done? I think it's regional, but certain things would be like um, taking a uh, uh, pollock. The fish, mm-hmm. uh, dried the dried pollock, and uh, hanging it hanging it in their car. Uh, sometimes they might take a puja, <clears throat> yeah, oh, for a short time it would, <laughs> during the ritual. I was like, so, I yeah. think that's a little yeah. air freshener right, right there. Right. Um, and then, or sometimes uh, some other regions they put a, a puja, the talisman, um, in the mouth of the, of the of the pollock, um, and then hold the ritual. Uh, another big thing. Uh, Back to if you go back to our warding off evil episode, we talked a little bit about red beans and how that was related to funerary customs uh, to avoid spirits from attaching themselves to you and, and haunting you when you when you leave funerals. Uh, they would uh, in some of the rituals, the Chatham Chagosa, they would take a handful of red beans and throw them at their car. Ah, okay. So that was a way to draw out any evil spirit. That okay, that would make sense. Yeah, that may be attaching itself to the car. BTW, this is where we saw the snake right here. Oh, okay. Um, so, right, right at that green sign. Right is it still there? No. <laughs> That's what I was like, is it still there? <laughs> on the is there another one? If it was still there, that would be interesting. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, so the the the, the Chattel Chattel Gosa. It's really interesting that, that some people still perform this. And you might eat this. In this area that we're currently in, um, obviously we can't, we can't show anyone. I'm uh, really trying to avoid the bumps. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, this is a very rural area. Uh, right now, I'm going to... That's an understatement. Yeah, I'm going to describe the road. We are currently on a road, a straight road, very bumpy, and there's nothing on either side but trees and farms. Uh, especially on the right-hand side There's here. mountains up in front of us. Uh, some of them, I think, are North Korea. No, no, we're not that close. No, that's all, that's all still South Korea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a lot of military bases around here, of course. Um, and uh, so this would be the kind of area where, where you'd find people who still hold on to their, their culture, that, that rural culture uh, of... Um, of, the, of the, the folk beliefs, and I'm, I'm certain you would find people around here, some old farmers who buy a new car. I'm gonna go this way. Yeah, uh, who buy a new car, and they would perform the Charong Chagosa. Now, more on that, the, the Charong Chagosa is actually a type of what a ritual that Koreans call the Angmagi. The Angmagi is is a ritual that was that kind of a, a broader term, an umbrella term for rituals. Uh, that are used to kind of avoid calamity and uh, disasters and things like that. So Koreans traditionally would perform Engmagi um, at the beginning of the new year. It'd be held in, especially on the first, uh, the, the first uh, full moon. Oh, okay. So just to, to uh, avoid any any misfortune in the coming year. All very regional as well. Would this be related to? I've seen this before, where they would do a ritual for a new taxi car. Oh yeah, that, that's very likely a Chadong Chagosa. But they had a pig's head for that one. Yep, yep. Sure. Soju. Uh, sure, absolutely. That's exactly what it is. Now it's for fortune, though, I thought that was for fortune. Well, good fortune. Yeah. So a Gosa is to avoid any calamity, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah. calamity comes from evil spirits yeah. in the folk beliefs, yeah. right? Or pig, which is don. Yeah, yeah. So that's right. money. money, yeah, wealth, yeah, and fortune. Um, but yeah, so that's like for success. But that's also to ward off. You, just, you don't have success if you have a car accident, right? Yeah. So it's all kind of linked. Okay. So yeah, so do because the gods like to get drunk. Yeah. If there's alcohol involved, it's very likely a folk belief related to uh, appeasing deities or pleasing deities of some sort. <laughs> so that's the Chadung Chagosa, the or a type of Engmagi, which is a ritual. 
Korean folk belief, very, very old, uh, where they try to avoid calamity. And it's been modernized to help people not have accidents. Very similar to how St. Christopher, yeah, the patron saint of travelers, how that was modernized. Because people was a, used to have St. Christopher's medals on their cars. Exactly. Yep. There's a there's a little scene in I think it's Airplane or Airplane Two, mm -hmm. where they look like it looks like the everyone thinks they're going to crash, and even the St. Christopher's medal goes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Joe just took his hand off the wheel. And we almost went on. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. The the uh, so Saint Christopher as a patron pa patron saint of travelers is ancient. It's old. It's really really old. The idea of him existing is le is more of a legend, I think. Oh really? Going back to like the third century. Um, I don't think there was actual evidence that he, he lived. He was he was an actual man. But um, but but anyway, yeah, he's been a patron saint for travelers for a very long time, and then it, it updated when we when we had cars. So, yeah, we put medallions cool. on their dashboards. So it's very similar with the with the, um, the Chato Chagosa. Modern, modernized folk beliefs. Gotta, you gotta keep updated, Joe. You gotta keep... I do? Versions, version 2.0, 2.0... 2.10, 2.0, 2.1. Keep it going. Keep yeah. Going, yeah. Gotta keep, gotta keep updating. Now, um, one thing that people notice when they first come to Korea is the driving culture is a little bit uh, different than maybe some Western countries. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you wonder, like, how many accidents really happen here. With the way people drive. Now, I will say, oh wow, this is all military structures here. Mm. Um, we're gonna drive in North Korea. <laughs> rock tape. What is rock tape? Rock tape. Maybe some flint. Go stronger, things. longer. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I've noticed it's gotten better over the years. I, I saw yeah. three accidents on my way to Seoul yesterday, but Jesus, three. Three, just, three, just, and they were just like bumpers, and it usually involved some bongo was, truck. Right, right. Hitting someone in the back. Yeah. Yeah, I was, so I was going to ask you, have you seen any, any accidents? Yeah. No, not, three just yesterday. Not like ambulance worthy accidents. Mm -hmm. It was just fender benders, and just even then, you couldn't even see a dent. Yeah, right, right. It's just people just being slightly careless. But I've noticed that it's gotten easier. So we gotten better, gotten better, but Korea used to have really have a problem with uh, traffic deaths. Yeah, it peaked. I think it was I think it was the year two thousand that it peaked. Uh, two thousand, two thousand one, maybe. It uh -huh. peaked. It was like it was well over a thousand deaths in a single year, uh, but close to two thousand. Um, and there weren't. I think at that time there weren't as many people driving. Now, I'm not sure about those stats. I'm not going to... Yeah, not yeah gonna you can... I mean, we're not there. I wouldn't say I'm an expert on why things changed. Other than maybe just you just need more generations that have grown up with cars. I think policy had... And, 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 and policy... Enforcement and, of policy. And of course, policy and some enforcement of policy. We could deal with a little bit more <laughs> enforcement. Well, one that I really... <laughs> one that always sticks out to me is that when I first came to Korea, uh, running red lights was, was common. It was almost expected. The red were, lights are just suggestions. Just Don't you know that? Yeah. So it, it still happens, but it's really changed. We it's just did that. Did you just run a red light? We did that before. He saw one of those other cars running before us. Uh, no, I think, uh, that's, that's fine. Edit that part out. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, but, but yeah, another big thing was when people would stop at red lights, they'd stop on the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Very, very common. So pedestrians crossing the street had to walk around the front or the back of the cars. Yep. And walking around the front, some of these cars would be so far out that you'd walk, you'd have to walk around the front of the car and you'd be getting close to the traffic that's going yeah. to get, that's crossing with you. Uh, or you walk around the back of the car, you're breathing in fumes. So it wasn't a good thing. But years ago, I remember the cops... Uh, change that they really or the government wanted to enforce the law. Mm -hmm. So they 
I remember that I lived in Ilsa, and uh, yeah, there were there were cops at all main intersections. Yeah, if you had two tires over, it was a certain amount, a certain fine. I remember them. I've seen them out ac- actively finding people. Yeah, and they were doing it for a couple of months, and it really changed. Uh, you don't really see that. I think a lot of people just drove recklessly because they never got any feedback that they were driving recklessly. Right. That's uh, good there's, a, um, there's a book, I think, oh, there's a book I was reading, I think it's called Drive or something like that. It's all all these studies done on road behavior, traffic, and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, they said, yeah, they said that one reason a lot of bad drivers continue to be bad is people don't hump their horns at them or tell them that they're right. being bad. They're not that's, aware that they're being bad. That's a big thing for me. Uh, 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 I've had a few situations where I'd get, I'm crossing the street and people would, would zoom by. And that annoys me. It's dangerous. I know. I want one of those air horns. Yeah, right, right. But, oh, yeah. No, I yell at people. And I can speak Korean, so I can yell at them in Korean. I can swear at them in Korean. And I have. One thing that happened to me, uh, probably, let's see, it was before I was married, since so 15 years ago. Um, I... Uh, I was crossing the street, going home. I was walking my dog. It was night, and it was ra- it was raining earlier that night, like when we started the walk. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, but it stopped raining about halfway through, and so I had my umbrella closed. And uh, it was one of those small umbrellas, so I had it closed. I was walking the dog. I was waiting for my light to change in the small street, and my light turned. My crosswalk light turned green, so Damn. I crossed. Uh, and then, of course, the traffic light was red. But as I crossed, a cop ran through the red light and cut me off. And I threw my umbrella at his car. And I hit it. And he stopped. And when he got out, and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, what are you doing? You ran a red light. I'm walking with my dog. I have the right of way. Hmm. And then he's and his partner got out, too. And he's kind of looking at me. And then the partner said, kata, kata. Let's go, let's go. So... My dog was really big too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's like, like foreigner with Lakota. a dog yeah. speaking fluent Korean. Yeah, not fluent, uh, but um, but um, so but he was completely in the wrong. Now maybe I. Sh- but he's a police man. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown my umbrella at him. But that's that's what do you com- do? What do you do? That comes back to what you just said. He had he, people have to know they're doing something wrong. And if he's if he's a cop, he definitely knew he was doing something wrong. He's supposed to be part of the enforcement of law, so I had no problem throwing my umbrella at that cop car. Um, but uh, I, I think that kind of thing now would be um, uh, rare. Be a lot I wouldn't do that again. There was an issue one time when I was so tempted to do this too. When I'm mm-hmm. waiting for a bus, mm-hmm. and I'm waiting for for work, and I'm waiting for the bus, and it just zooms right by the stop without even taking any passengers. Oh. Not because it was full, it was just, you know, just didn't want to do it. Yeah. Didn't feel like it because it was too congested. Because there, maybe there were too many buses there and it's, uh, I'll just go buy this one. Mm. And so uh, I read the news about one young man who threw a rock at a bus that passed him, passed everyone. The bus was in the wrong, but yeah. the, the guy who threw the rock still got in trouble. Sure, yeah, 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 sure. Uh, it's the heat of the moment kind of thing, I suppose. Dude, um, dude, there's so many times I just wanted to throw a rock at a bus that yeah, just yeah. ran right by. And then there's that one time, I think it was 2008, 2007. Don't see it this much anymore, but uh, I was at my bus. Well, I was in the bus and it was, it was stopping. And then my bus driver was cursing. And then he rolls on the window and starts yelling at this other bus driver next to him. And it turns into a screaming match. I'm like, okay, this is going to take a while. And then the other bus driver got out of his bus, got into my bus, and clocked my bus driver. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty. That's, that's going to be far with it. That's old Korea. That's old school. <laughs> I've seen people fighting for parking spots. <gasps> yeah. Another, um, it's yeah. not worth it. Yeah, no, it's not worth it. Um, so, but yeah, it's kind of the road, road rage happens everywhere for sure. But thing, but like you said, you know, back to what you said, it's got, it's getting better. I think, uh, running red lights is really, uh, it has really gotten better. Um, and 
or it's not being done as much anymore. I think there's also a general awareness. I think people are so used to other people driving recklessly. That mm. People, right? Because I I've driven in places like Atlanta. Atlanta has a lot of accidents all the time, but I think a lot of the accidents happen because people are not paying attention. Right? They're just they're just zoned out because right. they expect everyone else to drive safely mm -hmm. so they don't do it here I think everyone expects everyone else to do something stupid and sudden mm -hmm. unexpected so everyone has a lot of people have this awareness about them right right yeah and I've seen have you ever seen anyone hit by a car I've seen the aftermath <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I have a really bad story that'll make me sound really bad. I was in, I think it was a Guro Digital Complex. I was. I like you're like I have a story that's gonna make me sound really bad. I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell it, <laughs> dude. I got nothing. I don't have much to hide. Um, it's a, like it's a crowded intersection. It's a crowded crosswalk, and I'm cr doing the crosswalk, and it's, it is one of those cases where the cars are sneaking over the crosswalk. So we're trying to squeeze by, <laughs> and and it just ha I just walked up before I even noticed I was walking over someone who had just gotten hit. Oh no! And and it didn't it didn't register until I'd already walked past them. Oh but no! That, that's what had happened. Right. Oh my god. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, that's not. Like it was very crowded sidewalk. Right. Crosswalk. Right. right. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I've seen. Um, I've seen, yeah, I've seen a couple aftermath, uh, aftermath accidents. Uh, there was a guy, I don't know what, who's, who was at fault, but a guy, uh, this was at the intersection in Ilsan at the Giup, the Giup intersection. Um, and my bus was going the opposite direction, going towards Seoul, and uh, the guy was on a bicycle. And it looked like, I mean, like this is aftermath, so I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but he was on the ground and he was unconscious. There was blood on the on the street. Oh no! And he wasn't wearing a helmet, and uh, he got hit by a bus that was turning left. I don't think the helmet would have made a difference. Maybe not. He, but he may not have. He may have saved his head, right? At yeah. Least. Um, so, um, but that was after the cops were uh, first responders. I think cops weren't there, but. Uh, first responders were, were already the ambulance was already there, yeah. but the guy wasn't moving. Uh, um, so um, that was terrible. Yeah. But I've seen several people get hit by cars in Korea. Wow! Right in front of me. Um, a couple of that are the first time was my first year in Korea, and uh, um, and this then opens up the the conversation about how a lot of the traffic problems are about uh, bad pedestrians. <laughs> So, yeah, there's, um, there's, I think it's um, a Freakonomics podcast about this. Bad driver right there, seeing so he crossed through the, crossed through the traffic. The freaking okay, sorry, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm keeping my eye open for all this. I was like, so. Uh, oh, I'm, you know, I'm focusing now. Don't yeah, worry about yeah, it. Yeah, I am not, I'm not commenting on that. I'm just like, I hope like we don't see an accident. Oh, 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 oh. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Go ahead. No, this is a Freakonomics show about like a lot of pedestrian accidents are. The fault of the pedestrian. It's actually around 50 50 around the world. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're driving or not. You're, you're and the, not the, what was proven caution. the best solution is solutions that kept cars away from pedestrians. Oh, my like, God. like freeways, like where we're on right now. Right, right. That was. Yeah. Yeah, so the first one I saw was, um, again, is at that same intersection, a little bit farther up the, in Gia. And. Um, there was a, there was, I don't even know if there still is, I haven't been to that area in a long time, but there was a pizza hut there. And I was with my coworkers, and we came out of the pizza hut, and we're all just kind of standing around, or chatting, it's like, anyone want to go get a beer? It was kind of a round two kind of thing. And we heard, a, we heard a screech of tires, and when my buddy Shane, Sokun, his English name, the Korean guy, but old Korean friend, met him on my first day in Korea, um, he and I heard the screech, and we looked up, and we saw a little kid get hit by a taxi. No! So he and I bolted. We, we, we ran out. Um, and the traffic was stopping and going around and stuff. By the time we got there, the guy... It, what happened was, the kid was on the on the uh, meridian. Yeah. That separates the, the, like the, the traffic going in both right. directions. He was crossing the street there. He didn't go up to the crosswalk. But he was with his father. 
So it looked like what it seemed to me was his father went first, was was running across. His father went first, and the boy followed his dad. Oh my! And he got hit by a taxi. The, the I'm father, so paranoid. I would never do that. Yeah. Um, I would never, never, ever cross the street like that myself. But especially now with my daughter in tow, no. it's ridiculous. So the kid got hit. We have no idea what happened to the kid, but the father picked picked the kid up yeah, and. Um, no, I'm going this way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, he picked the, he picked his son up and jumped into the cab, and I guess they drove to a hospital. But also, that's the first thing. Never touch, never touch anyone who's just been hit. You could call the ambulance, you get first responders because you might well, damage the neck. Right? Don't think. Anyway. Yeah. yeah you know. He, I don't think he was the type of person who would have done that. No. No. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then another time. Do you remember when Kyobo, the Kyobo intersection in in Kwangamun, where the Kyobo bookstore is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the big intersection, the Kwangamun intersection. Do you remember when before they changed it? They they uh, um, when it was just a big traffic circle. <laughs> big mess. Big, but but yeah. the the cross the, the the crosswalk was farther back. Oh. It wasn't at the actual the square. Oh. It was farther back, so traffic had to go had to drive through the crosswalk to get to the the actual intersection. Oh man. And um, I was standing there once after a hike, and I was with a couple of friends. And the guy got his green light to cross, and he started running, and then a car hit him. He went right over the right uh, over the. You gotta always check when you're crossing. Yeah, and I was a witness. Me and my friends were witnesses. We we had to stay. We had to give uh, statements to the police. Oh my. Yeah. So, uh, so it was the person's fault because they had a red light. They had to stop. But it was just poor design as well. Yeah. And they've since you know years. It's years ago now that the the crosswalk is now actually at the yeah at the the square yeah so yeah now looking back yeah I remember that yeah yeah so I always thought that was weird uh, one nightmare is I just you just made me remember something I try to excise from my brain was um, I did see my old local my little old local mall, mall bus mm -hmm. uh, had stopped and there was an old lady struggling underneath it oh god. I don't want to say that image again. Yeah, I know. Uh, stuff like that's just, just heart wrenching. Yeah. Just can't, yeah, things that you can't unsee just uh, just uh, breaks your heart, and, not, and you're helpless. There's nothing you can do. Nothing we can do. I was I was in I was in the, the bus going the other way. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Um. So, just quick on bad drivers too. Speaking of things that you, images you can't get out of your head, I was in a bus one time, and. Uh, I we, we stopped and I looked down it's kind of as you do is it stops you look at your window a little bit and I looked down at the car that was next to us and um, there was a woman driving the car she was stopped as well well she was she had both hands on the wheel no no she had one hand on the wheel and she was breastfeeding her baby while driving I'm all for public breastfeeding Yes, but, well, in the car is not public, so, uh, but she was driving the car, breastfeeding her baby on the cell phone, and then she, before we started driving. How many hands does this woman have? I know. So, it's like she kind of had her left hand out, but the baby's head was, was uh, cushioned into her, like, kind of like the, the groove of her, the inside of her elbow, and then feeding from her left side. And then she was holding the wheel with her left hand, then on the phone with her right hand, and just before we started, their light turned green and we pulled out of the intersection, she hung up her phone and she picked up a coffee. I, I was floored. I couldn't believe it. That's the worst drive that, I've ever seen. That's when you yeah, shouldn't be driving. Oh, you, you, you should be. You, you go to jail. Yeah. You definitely you go to jail. Um, putting that, that little baby's life at risk, you lose your child. I think I, I fully support people. Mm. Uh, social services getting involved. It's like, yeah, no, you you failed the test. <laughs> you failed the motherhood test. You are now uh, uh, no longer uh, responsible for the safety of this child because you obviously don't care. Yeah, I would just wonder what the circumstances was, but then... Well, sorry, yeah, but still, she was very nonchalant. She wasn't in a rush. She was just on the phone, chatting, and she just sipped from the coffee. Now and again, she looked down at the baby. So, awful, awful. Uh, so, circumstances, 
and I think regardless of certain certain circumstances, a situation like that. I think we're on the strip right now. We are. We. I was just going to say we are now on the Jayado, and we're here around the area where people claim to have uh, seen those ghosts. We are here. On the right hand side with me, we're heading towards Seoul. We're is this southern this, is this the Imjin River right here? No, it's the Han. It's the Han. Yeah, it might be back here then. Is the is it closer where... to the Imjin? Yeah. Okay. So on the right hand side uh, here uh, is the Han River. This is all the barbed wire all along here. There's three. Uh, I think it's two layers. Yeah, two layers of barbed wire. There's watch posts all along here. And the Gimpo on the other side. The Gimpo on the other side. So, anyway, so, um, yeah, and then, so bad drivers, man. <laughs> Just, yeah, I think, I think we got a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um... Just quick, some other interesting, maybe before we wrap up, unless you have something else to, to share, uh, about public transportation. And I still think the worst drivers in Korea are bus drivers. Bus yeah, drivers. well, they, yeah, well, I, I, I think they don't train them, or they, they'll get guys who have never driven before, they just get their license just to drive a bus, so right. they've never driven before. Mm -hmm. And there's not much oversight. Right. It depends on the bus company. Yeah. And they, and, and they're they're work like slaves. They uh, work they're overworked. Way way too long. They're tired. There are so many accidents uh, because bus drivers fall asleep at the wheel. Mm. There was two really big ones, big profile ones, a couple of years ago, and uh, one was I don't remember which highway it was. It was outside of Seoul. Going to I think driving towards Seoul. And um, uh, we we have video of this because someone had the video, the camera in the back of the, the back window of their car, mm -hmm. and uh, the driver was driving a, a, a um, intercity, uh, not intercity, a provincial interprovincial bus, and uh, he fell asleep at the wheel, and he hit a car in front of him. And the bus went up over the car and it rolled the car into a ball. Yeah, I think I've seen that one. It's four ladies in that car. No, it was an old, uh, an older married couple. Okay. And oh yeah, I remember that one. They yeah. just got back from I think it's their grandchild's first birthday. Oh no. So um, either a celebration of the birth, like the baby went home, or something like that. Uh, maybe the 100 day because Koreans still mark the 100 days mm -hmm. or the first birthday I can't remember which one exactly but they died mm -hmm. the grandparents died both of them died um, and they died because the, the bus driver uh, rolled their car into a ball went right up over the car yeah. and uh, um, yeah uh, uh, because the drivers worked to death worked work, work work to the bone. Yeah, we've had some incidents with uh, airport limousine drivers, the airport bus drivers. Oh, really? Yeah, they've, they've had accidents. Yeah, they're falling asleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awful. It's terrible. Um, and then just quick on public transportation, Korea's first public transportation were, were the streetcars, the trams, that were launched in Seoul. Uh, that was over 100 years. It was 1899. Which people thought were... were uh, possessed. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of really interesting uh, superstitions surrounding them that that were drawn. Some of it was drawn out of the folklore, um, and uh, a, lot, a lot of it was drawn out of just misunderstanding of, of how they worked and they operated. Um, but there was a drought at the time when they uh, when they uh, when they operated when they first launched, and uh, the, the people blame. The drought on the uh, on the street on the streetcars on the trams. So, um, interestingly, they they fought back and they destroyed a couple of the streetcars. Uh, and the company had to uh, shut down the streetcars for for some time, within a couple of weeks or something. And not long after the streetcars were shut down, it started to rain. <laughs> I was going to ask. Yeah, it started to rain. But another interesting thing is that with the streetcars, several people, uh, as I said, mostly men, realized that the rails were quite cold. They stayed cool, so they, they were a nice place to sleep in the summer. So, obviously not a good place to sleep anytime, summer regardless, but men would come out at night when they knew the last train 
had passed through on its way to the. So I think it was Seoul Station was the was the terminus station at the time for the final yeah, for the final car of the night. Yeah, and uh, which was called the Owl, Bologna. and um, but one I think it was it was in the, the summer 1900 or in August I think it was early August 1900. Uh, the, that last car uh, was running late. And uh, a couple of men thought that they didn't know that it was running late. They thought that it had already passed. So they came out and they lay on the tracks with their straw mats. And they fell asleep using the rail of like a pillow. And of course, the, the car came through uh, probably fast. Um, late at night, you know, the driver wanted to finish his, wanted to finish his, uh, shift, uh, his shift at home. And so he... Uh, he saw them lying on the, on the rail, but he couldn't stop in time, and he ran them over and cut their heads off. Yikes. So, one of the uh, other people were hit, hit by cars. Uh, there, was a, there was an accident, if I'm remembering right, there was an accident on, uh, on the, um, the bridge, the bridge, I'm blanking on the name of the bridge, oh my god. Um, the, uh, the bridge where we do, we have on the tour. Oh, um, Guangtangyo. Yeah, Guang, Guangtangyo, that's right. Um, as far as I recall, and I may be wrong about this, I'll double check. If anyone listening wants to, wants to do the research and double, I, I'm definitely going to double check. Uh, but you may want to double check yourself uh, just to be sure. I think, I'm pretty sure tracks ran across Guangtangyo, um, uh, Guangtangyo, um, at, at one point. And, um, at one point, a car tipped over on it and broke part of the bridge. It's an accident. So there, there are some uh, some of the earliest accidents, traffic accidents mm. in Korea's history. All right. And we got through the show without an accident. This show's not over yet. <laughs> Still time. Let's end it. All right. So thank you for listening. Uh, uh, thank. Just remind you again, we do run the Dark Side of Soul Ghost Walk at darksideofsoul.com. You can you can join our patrons if you want to watch videos and get all this extra stuff at patreon.com slash darksideofsoul. We would like to thank our top tier patrons, Angel Earl, Joe Bonomini, Jamie Staley, Sharon Cullen. Sharon Cullen. Um Send me your ghost stories. And send Sean <laughs> ghost stories and stay tuned for the Dark Side of Soul comic. Yes. But so excited for that. Coming out, it looks gorgeous. Yes, it does. It looks great. So, so join our tour. We're running. We, we've had two this weekend. I ran one and then Joe ran one. Yeah, we're, they're, they're happening. Yeah. They're happening again. And I have one Really great. Weekend. We've yeah. had a dr- definite COVID-19 dry spell. Yep. But it's coming back. Yep, yep. We just we wear our masks and, and we social distance. We well, yeah, do as yeah. much as we can. Do as much as we can. Yeah, That's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so until next time, everyone, stay safe <laughs> and spooky. Uh, stay spooky. <laughs> stay spooky. <laughs> stay spookily safe and good night and day. But thanks for joining. <laughs> <laughs>